And I said, you know, I'm never, ever, ever trading again until I figure this crap out. You don't have to learn to trade alone. Welcome to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, where we interview professional currency traders and industry experts who can help you improve your trading and your life. And now, your host, Hugh Kimura. Hello, traders, and welcome to episode number 20 of the Lifestyle Trading Podcast, brought to you by TradingHeroes.com. My name is Hugh Kimura, and in this interview, I sat down with Austin Netsley. I think you're going to be really inspired by this story, because I sure was. Austin was working a day job at an oil company when he first learned about trading. Luckily, his job allowed him the flexibility to trade on the side, but things didn't go so well in the beginning. He finally came to a point where he decided that he either needed to quit trading or really figure it out, and that's when things really turned around for him. In this interview, you'll learn how he was able to create a very low-maintenance, automated trading method that fit his personality, and which now allows him to pursue other endeavors that he is also passionate about. So it's my pleasure to present my interview with Austin Netsley. Before we get started, this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not investment, trading, or financial advice of any kind. But in this episode, there might be some advice on how to make the perfect cup of coffee. As you know, Forex or any type of trading is very risky and you could lose all of your money. Seriously. And finally, past performance does not indicate future results. All right, now on to the show. Hey, Austin, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Hugh. It's been an honor. I've been looking forward to this, so excited to chat with you here today. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to hearing about your experiences. I guess the first question I ask people usually is, how did you first get started in trading? Yeah, so I I always had an interest in trading. I always had an an interest in the stock market, Wall Street, but I never knew anybody that actually did it. So it took me until I was about 24 years old or so, and I was in a sales uh, role with my company, with the oil company. So I was working out of home, and I had a little bit more flexibility with my schedule than the corporate office, of course. So I started to started to dabble in the stock market. My buddy was doing it, and uh, he, he was apparently having success, which I found out he actually wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but, but the stock market had started to go up. This was about 2009, 2010, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, there was a lot of buzz going on about it going up, and, and you know, I was in there trading a lot. I was making a lot of money. I was losing a lot of money, making a lot of money, losing a lot of money. It was stressful, and, and everything that I had envisioned, I had uh, multiple different monitors. So finally, I figured, you know, I, I'm not making any money. It's not really worth my time. So I started to actually, I, I stopped trading at that point. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I'm never, ever, ever trading again until I figure this crap out. So I spent the next six months just fully dedicating myself to the craft, um, as working at least 40 hours per week on top of my 50 hour per week job and just really hustling and grinding, reading through probably 50 different to uh, 50 to 100 different books, uh, joining different LinkedIn groups and, and uh, networking as much as possible, uh, joining different online forums, just trying to consume as much information as possible. Then um, after that six month period, I, I said, all right, well, I'm not learning anything new anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's time for me to, to go forward and put this into practice. So I, I eventually created my own automated algorithm and, and well, well, it's just an algorithm and I automated that and then turned that into a business. But that whole time frame was uh, probably a, close to a two-year time frame while I was in this one sales role that allowed me that flexibility. But that's how I got started, really. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Um, so did you learn pro- uh, programming in school or did you teach yourself or how did that work? Yeah, so I'm a mechanical engineer, so I've had done some programming in the past, but I absolutely hated it, and I I didn't necessarily uh, want to do it again, but at the same time, once I created something that I was pretty proud of, and and I tested it in uh, Excel, and then some uh, different free um, or very cheap ways of of testing that, uh, I I found out that I had something, and I didn't want to share that with a great programmer, so what I did was learn the bare bones that I needed to learn so that I could automate it, because I knew the last thing I wanted was to be as stressed out as I was when I was day trading. Uh, I wanted to find the profitable strategy and then take myself out of that and just scale it. And so then eventually I was going to work by just pressing an on button, 
coming home from work, pressing the off button, and, and, and all my trading was done uh, without my emotions. And that was a much, much better way to do it. But uh, yeah, I learned enough trading uh, or enough coding to be able to set it up, but I don't know much more than that. Like if I had to go back in now and make some major tweaks, it would be a problem for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool. A lot of people, I, I guess that's the dream, you know, a lot of people buy these robots online or whatever, they think they're going to make a lot of money with it, but what are some of the pitfalls that people don't see with automated trading? Well, I would say even before we get into the automation piece, I would say if people are buying the different programs out there, it's not necessarily going to work unless it jives with your personality. And there are literally thousands of different ways you can make money in the stock market or, or any of the markets. Um, what you have to find first is that strategy and, and that uh, system or, or that, uh, 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 I forget what the word, word I'm looking for is, but that market that's, that interests you. And then once you find those two things and, and you find something potentially that that works for you uh, within that area, then you can go forward. But uh, the big thing that, that stops a lot of people is, is they go down a path and they try to be like somebody else and it doesn't work because it, they, they can't handle the risk or they can't handle the time frame or they don't have that right patience or, or whatever. So um, w when people come to me, they often want to know right from the start what my algorithm is. But what I try to have them do first is understand what type of uh, system, what type of strategy will work for them and their personality and meet their goals, meet their time frames, meet their abilities. Uh, so that's the first step. Um, the, the second step is from an automation standpoint, it all makes a lot of sense but you really have to understand their true impact. You have to understand slippage. You have to understand the cost involved because the last thing that you want to do is to put all this work into to creating and then realize that, you know what, I'm stacking up thousands upon thousands of commissions every single month and I'm only making $2,000. This isn't going to work long term. Uh, so, so that's a big thing that I found at first that Oh wow! I have to really, really trim down my commissions. Oh wow! I have to really, really um, uh, hone in on this because um, it, when I'm talking about making zero point two percent per trade, that's a pretty small number. That um, is, it makes a big difference if I just get a little bit more or get uh, a little savings in a commission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. I think uh, number one to your first point. I think a lot of people. Think that it's a magic formula that's going to solve everything, but they really mm -hmm. have to tailor it to their personality. Um, yeah, and, and just on that point, so a, a couple of the books that I read earlier on were from Jack Schwager, and I had Jack Schwager on my podcast, and him and I were, were laughing as we were talking about that that one golden strategy. <laughs> There's no one. I mean, if you look at the people that he interviewed, every single one of them are completely different. And 90% of them make money in completely different ways uh, in, in the way that they invest. So that alone right there just showed me, okay, so there's no one, one magic formula. I can stop looking for that. I can start looking for the perfect formula for me and who I am. And that's hopefully what I've done. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so I'd like to delve a little bit more into how you actually trade, what you trade. So do you trade just straight stocks or options or what do you trade? And can you give us a little idea of your trading style? Sure, sure. So I, play, I trade just U.S. equities only, and I um, uh, do swing trading. So um, I wasn't ever patient enough for the, for the long-term investing, if you will, and I wasn't uh, really able or, or willing or, or wanting to, to uh, watch every single tick. So swing trading was that perfect fit for me. So what I do is, is I hold a position anywhere – between 15 minutes and 15 days, and, and the average is about 2.2 days for me, and, and that works out perfect. And, and of course, the longer uh, that you hold a position in the swing, um, so we're looking to, to to take advantage of those that volatility. The only job that I have is to find stocks that I think are getting ready to move. I don't have a great and scientific way of going about that now, but that's still part of the fun for me is to use. That's the only time I really use my opinion is, is okay, this what the, uh, this this particular stock is doing. This is what could potentially happen. Let's put it in my program and see what happens. So once I put it in there, then all of my opinions are out the door. It's just a numbers game from there. Um, so, so that's a little bit about it. Um, 
I, I use two different indicators. One is is pretty common, which is the MACD, and the other uh, I created myself, and that's part of the, the you know the, the the algorithm that that I say I created. Um, and and when those two things line up, it tells the the system to either go long, close the position, or go short. And and uh, or of course, I'm, I'm often uh, times don't have a position, so. Um, yeah, so I have about 30 different stocks that are at any given time be in a position. Typically, 20 or less of those are in a position at, at any given time. And I'll never be weighted uh, too heavily to one side. So I'll always have at least 20% typically uh, in uh, a short direction if, if the 80% is long and, and vice versa. But um, when it is, of course, tilted one way, uh, if I if, if I'm mostly long or mostly short, that's usually a good thing because that means we're in in some type of a trend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, wow, this is interesting. So, I mean, I think this is also an important point that you basically have one system with two indicators. Is that correct? That that you trade. That, that is correct. Yep. Yep. And okay. and you know, I I don't really care what type of stock it is. I just care that it's getting ready to move. But what mm -hmm. we've traded most uh, over the last two years uh, are still a lot of technology stocks, and it, it changes. Uh, it could change um, e every day if I wanted it to. But you know, I like to to look at it at least every two weeks, if not every four weeks, uh, just to to see if there's any new ideas. But it, you know, it's really the same stocks that I've been following mostly for the last year or, or more. Oh, I see. Okay, great. Um, I think it's an important point because a lot of people think that you need several different systems or your system has to be terribly complex in order to make any money. But you're a good example of, you know, just keep being simple and just make doing it what, what works, right? The, the more simple something is, the more robust it is. And, you know, we, we get that's the, the, the probably the second biggest thing uh, from an automation standpoint that, that uh, people fall into this trap is people try to, to fix their system and there's so many different platforms out there that can show you how to optimize your system but what you're doing is optimize it, fitting it to the past. What you want to do is test it and test it and test it going forward and make it as simple and robust as possible so that in any type of market you have something that you can make money. Uh, so that's really, really important. I mean when I was starting out one, I was making my system way too complex, and two, I was definitely curve fitting. Mm -hmm. And what I found out as I went through the six months where I, I gave myself, all right, I'm not, tr I'm not putting my live money out there until I figure this out. And, and what I did then was actually put these things into action. What I found was the more complex it was, the more wrong it was going forward. Yes, it would have had 147% per year return in the past, but that's not definitely not what I'm seeing going in the future. So if you can have something, uh, again, the more simple it is, the more robust it is, the more it'll last in any market. Really, really important. So does backtesting play any part in your you know, an analysis of a system or is it just strictly forward testing? Absolutely it does. It's the quickest and best way to see if something is a quick no. And, and that's what you, you kind of want to understand. Is it in the, the maybe pile or is it in the no pile? And that's, that's the best way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's important to backtest. I, I definitely don't want something that doesn't make a lot of money in the past. But what I, I don't want is, is to change. So, so this is important. One, one thing that, we, that I found was that when I'm changing variables, if I change them just a little bit and see a big difference in the results, that's not something that's robust. That's something that's that's pretty curve fitted and, and or optimized in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. What you want to find is something that you can change the variables uh, in, in not a substantial way, but in, in a decent way that still has your 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 basic strategy in place, uh, and you don't see a big results. Um, but the, but the other thing is uh, that's awesome about automation is you can protect yourself very very easily. So I'm never in a position for more than 15 minutes if I start losing too much money. Uh, so of course you can have different stops in place and different timing things uh, happen. So the the world the world is your oyster if you if you learn how to program or learn to use some different systems and uh, you can find out what works. But again, don't look for that perfect solution. Look for something that's going to make money in any type of market and that will put you at ease and put your, 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 uh, fund, uh, going upwards for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, a common question that I get is 
when you're back testing or forward testing, what is a good um, percentage of return to target? It, it completely depends. It's mm -hmm. it's completely up in the air. One thing I would say is whatever return that it's showing you, cut that in half. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely want to add slippage in there. You just definitely want to simulate fees that you're going to handle. Get it basically. You want to find every single potential hole that you can and and give yourself the the worst case scenario in your back testing and and forward testing uh, stuff to see if it can make money. If it still survives you just trying to beat the crap out of it, then yeah, that's something that may be working uh, going forward. Some some different numbers that, that I would share with people, you would get completely different results. For some, for instance, like some of my systems would show that I would be making 80 to 100% per year, and, and those are not realistic, first of all. I'm not looking to, if, if a system does make that, I would be scared, uh, but, but what I'm looking for is is to make about two and a half percent per month, and that's not a huge number for some people, but that compounds to to thirty five percent per year, which is a huge uh, number for me, and and that's what I go for, and I try to can be very consistent on that in any type of market. So that's a beautiful system for me, um, and and that gives me a lot of opportunity to have insane opportunities elsewhere, um, because people here. So if you can do something in any type of market that's much higher than that. Uh, you may have something, but but the thing then is, are are you looking for your own money or are you looking to scale? Because if you're looking at your own money, oftentimes people don't have enough money that ten or twenty or thirty percent per year means anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're talking about having your own hedge fund eventually, then these numbers do make a lot of dollars for you. Um, so so it, it it depends on your goals, but. Again, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. I think that's the, the, the biggest thing that people want. But what I found is that investing is actually a long-term game, and that's why I go for the 35% per year mm -hmm. uh, every year. So Okay, cool. That's good to know. I was, I'm always interested in what people say to that question. And, and then, you know, and I would share those numbers 80 to 100% with some people, and they were like, oh, I just got 120% in this. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm like, all right, like if, if you do that year after year, then give me a call. But uh, until you do, um, yeah. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> you you get a one shot deal kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, what was kind of like your first big win that really told you, okay, I can, you know, I can do this, this will work? My first big win was my first month that I put it live, and my first month alone, I made like ten point two percent. Wow! And I was just like, just elated, just absolutely <laughs> elated. And um, we ha we haven't averaged that going forward, of course, but uh, we've definitely been uh, right around my goals and and have hit that. But but what I'm really going for, you know, at the end of the day, is I want something that has a. Uh, over a period of a week or two weeks or three weeks or especially a month, it's it's very consistent, and I can expect something. And that that expectation is worth a lot, and people will will pay a lot of money for the expectation. So if you get it, I, I, so the point is, if you can get something that's consistent and lower, I think that's oftentimes better than something that's vol volatile and on average higher. Uh, so if you can reduce that volatility, it's definitely a good thing. But but that first month. Uh, made me sh or made me know that I had something there for sure, mm -hmm. and that's when I started to put the, the 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 systems in place to to really scale it so that I could eventually quit my job. And it took me two years to to get over that fear and actually <laughs> quit my job, even though I was eventually making a lot more money pr by pressing this on and off button on the side <laughs> than I was in my in the, uh, as an engineer for an oil company. I was making a lot of money for, as an engineer for an oil company, but nonetheless. Uh, we made it happen and, and stepped away, and now I have three different businesses instead of just one. So awesome, awesome. Yeah, I really want to get into that part, but just real quick before we shift gears, um, if somebody wants to get into automated trading, what are some books or some resources that you would recommend? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I always wanted to to write my own book on it uh, because there's not a lot of great resources out there. Honestly, uh, I would just. Uh, uh, you find any forums, ask any questions, do Google searches. I'm sure there's some different YouTube videos. Just kind of consume as much as you can for the first month. Uh, and then what you really ultimately want to do is, is find somebody that does it and just see if you can pick their brain. But oftentimes, from my experience, uh, it's hard to connect with people that uh, do it and do it well. Um, I would say 
look at the different platforms and they offer a lot of training themselves. So there's like multi charts, Ninja Trader. Um, uh, I'm missing some of the mini ones because, again, I don't even handle this uh, now. But um, Trade Station, of course, like they're, they're probably the most popular. Um, they're, they're all slightly different. They all offer something, but they all, uh, some of the most of them are very, very easy to get started just so you can get your feet wet in there. I think the more important part is to understand, again, your strategy and, and how to invest well. Then once you understand that, then you can talk about automation. But uh, definitely look into it. Definitely paper trade and, and you'll figure out what works and what doesn't pretty quickly. Um, but there's also a book from Erland Chan that I, I would recommend. His is probably the only book that I can remember uh, that talks about automated trading. It's definitely not a great book, but it's well, one of the best that you can get as far as learning about automated trading. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thanks for the tip. Sure. Um, yeah, so I wanted to really talk about Yo Pro Wealth also. You have a number one best-selling book. Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's exciting. There's always something new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So what made you want to start that site? Yeah, well, I, I, I was just leaving the corporate world 12 months ago, and I was like, well, I'm traveling around the world. I can't do nothing. Like, I have this automated business that takes literally a couple seconds of my time, if, if, and sometimes I have my assistant do it. It's like, I got to do something. You know what I want to do? I just want to share these things I've learned about investing, about the mindset, about money, about personal finances. I'm going to start a blog and podcast, and I want to t have this excuse that I can talk to these amazing <laughs> people like Jack Schwager, like Tom Basso, who's featured in Jack Schwager's book, like uh, Steve Burns, who wrote, wrote a couple books that I read, uh, s several of these, these people that I looked up to from an investing or, or money standpoint. And the podcast was the beautiful excuse to be able to do that and I actually interviewed the great Hugh Kimura on there uh, <laughs> as well so it, it was awesome I mean it gives you an opportunity to to talk to great people and um, what I learned after about the 10th interview really early on mm -hmm. was that everybody's journey towards wealth was really the same and once I learned that I was like all right. The, well, the next progression here is is to write a book, and I, I wanted to summarize all these lessons, great, like great lessons that I learned from everybody. And I had those interviews transcribed for the first seventy five interviews, and put those lessons into a book. And then we put a ton of work into, you know, I I'm an engineer, so from the stock market, like I tried to crack the code and understand the analytics and get deep into that. We tried to do the same thing w with Amazon and, and, and how to launch a book. So we, we had a ton of success. I mean, we got my book to uh, probably over 50,000 people now, which is absolutely yeah, amazing. amazing. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, we just had actually another uh, probably 12,000 this week. Like it's just unbelievable. We're, we're 70 plus days after uh, the, the initial launch. So Anyhow, long story short, it's opened up so many more opportunities. Now we have uh, uh, we added two more businesses, and like it's just blowing up big time. So I'm excited about it because it gives uh, me an opportunity to to share the important things that have changed my life. Like I said, the the both investing and money pieces, but most importantly, the mindset piece. Uh, so that's cool, and that's what I'm passionate about. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what's the ultimate goal that you want to accomplish with your pro, or is there one? Yeah, so so I'm actually kind of necessarily branching away from YoPro and and more around an idea. So YoPro stands for Young Professionals for for those of you that, that don't know, uh, which most most people don't know. I found out. <laughs> um, but the ultimate goal is to have this platform to be able to do the things that I want to do, and the things that I want to do are inspire people in several different ways. So I want to teach people how to make money. I want to teach people and inspire people by talking about uh, some of the, the important messages uh, of that, you know, life is more than money, about you can do all, uh, whatever you really want, about, you know, because we, we grow up and we're not taught the certain things that the truly wealth, we're not taught to, to uh, do anything with investing or with our money. We're not necessarily taught, you know, how to think and we kind of stop our own selves. So what I want to do is inspire as many people as possible to make that transition from that middle class mindset that I talk about to this world of abundance and being able to do anything that you want, make as much money as you want because it's absolutely possible. It just takes that uh, learning that and, and getting that inspiration to get to that next level. So uh, again, I just want this big platform and, and we're building that. We're, we're growing our team every single month and I'm really excited about that. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, I guess we're coming up on our time here, but I really want to 
I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us and you gave us some great tips. Um, if people want to find out more about you, where should they go? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me again here. This has been great. I wish we could talk more, but I would say just one thing first before I tell you where to, where to find me is, is if you're interested in automated trading or, or, or making money through trading or, or whatever it is, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Just take this big complex challenge and focus on one step at a time. Like that's the secret to success. Is if you just do one thing at a time, uh, uh, like let's say that I'm just right now this month, I'm going to go read some books and learn about different strategies that are available to me. Then I'm going to find it. But just take it one step at a time. That's how you ultimately get to this automated uh, financial freedom, if you will. But um, thank you again. Um, you can find me at yoprowealth.com. That's y o p r o wealth.com. Uh, we have our own podcast. We're actually coming out with a new podcast, and that'll be called Make Money, Live Wealthy, which is after the book, and we'll be talking about a ton of great subjects then. So we'd love to have you come over and check it out. But thanks again, Hugh. Yeah, thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast. To listen to all of the other episodes and get free access to Forex trading tools, tutorials, and resources, visit tradingheroes.com.